Every year, freshmen at Hemfield do a STEM summit to study different facets of science, technology, engineering, and math. The STEM Summit, which is hosted by Junior Achievement, was an in-person event held for freshmen in years past. This program has many benefits to those participating, including introduction to STEM careers. Due to COVID-19, the STEM Summit looked a little different this year. Mrs. Bauer helped coordinate this learning opportunity with students and played a big role in its use by freshmen this year. So in a typical year, we would have a STEM Summit every November, and so that's when we have professionals from different STEM careers come in and students can actually engage, you know, face-to-face, hands-on, and then this year they rolled it out virtually, so at least we were able to do something, um, and they created a virtual summit. So students had the opportunity to create an avatar and actually go through the experience like they were at a conference um, or they could just click through the materials if they wanted to kind of go straight to the um, straight to the learning opportunities um, and they had all of the different professions that we would have had in person which was pretty neat. Brady Winger is a student who participated in the STEM summit this year. I found the STEM summit very helpful as someone who's considering a career in STEM technology, there were many resources that benefited me. Overall, the STEM Summit provides lots of help and guidance for Hemfield's freshmen. Virtual or not, for Hemfield Happenings, I'm Dylan Risser. In your mouth and there's a liquid inside. Grub Lake is a popular location in the Lancaster area that Boy Scout Troop 349 helps to maintain. However, COVID-19 has impacted the amount of work the Boy Scout Troop had to complete. Local Boy Scout Troop, Troop 349, helps to maintain the area around Grub Lake. The troop provides a service to both the wildlife and the people who like to come to the lake to picnic, hike, and fish. Troop 349 has been helping to clean the area surrounding the lake for over 10 years, which helps keep the lake as well as the trails around it looking neat and tidy. There's rakers, um, which we don't really do that much. Then there's shovelers. They kind of just shovel rocks and put them in places where they should be. And then there's um, clippers where they clip off sharp edges of trees. And there's just one person with a trash bag and two people who collect the trash and put it into the trash bag. So we pretty much go around, we clean up the trails, we uh, do the trash. Sometimes there's uh, like overgrown stuff on the trail. We clean that up. But once a year, we do a full cleanup. And then if like one of us is walking by here, it's our responsibility. Like, let's say if we're going with our family, it's our responsibility to just clean up any trash we find around. Not anything official though. Joseph Way is the scoutmaster of Troop 349. He helps to organize events that take place within the troop. Well, one of the, the long-standing um, uh, guides or, or rules in scouting is the, is the outdoor code, and, and um, scouts are to always leave a place better than they found it. Part of Boy Scouting is, is community service, and so uh, 349 has had a long-standing history of working um, at Lake Grub. There, we are, we're on the sign right over here, Boy Scout 349, that we support the, the trail and do trail cleanup. Troop 349 does a service to every person, plant, and animal at the lake. They have helped to keep the area clean for years and will continue to preserve the natural and beautiful location known as Lake Grub. For Hemfield Happenings, I'm Darian Rivard. Public schools receive several different types of government funding every year. One very important piece of funding comes from Title I. Title I is a type of federal funds that has been benefiting students since 1965. These funds are a form of equity used to ensure a student's success no matter their background. Maria Hoover is the current assistant superintendent and Title I representative for Hemfield. Title I is actually a federally funded supplemental education program and it's grant based and we apply for it every year um, and it's, it's federal dollars that come to the district to help support students in need, um, specifically in the areas of reading, ELA, literacy, math. In order to qualify for the Title I dollars, a school building must have 40% or more of students living under the poverty line. So Title I could be allocated, those dollars could be allocated district-wide, they can be allocated per building, they could be allocated per student. So we have some buildings in our school district who definitely 
benefit from the Title I federal dollars, which actually help with our literacy program. According to the PA Department of Education, schools with higher poverty rates tend to use this money to improve curriculum, while other schools, like Hempfield, use the money to help specially identified students. Kim Rainier is a reading specialist at Hempfield who works with these students directly. So as reading specialists um, who are in Title I buildings, we meet with small groups of students that we've identified at the beginning of the year who are at risk um, and need some additional support in literacy. Um, and then we meet with them five out of six cycle days for 30 minutes. But what we have to be careful of in Title I buildings is that if you are a Title I reading specialist, you're working just with students who have been identified as Title I program um, because they don't want to see that, for example, I'm spending time instructing students who haven't been identified, might be in the classroom and still struggling, but aren't in the program because specifically the monies need to be spent on those students and their families. Another major facet of Title I is the parent engagement aspect. To help this, Centerville Elementary School held a meeting discussing Title I led by Elementary School Curriculum Supervisor Jason Hoffman. Um, our, our Title I support is all for reading, and so our reading specialists in each of the buildings meet with parents throughout the year. Um, this meeting that we're having this week is specifically for parents to give feedback on the year that we've just had and then provide any changes, suggestions for the upcoming year. Um, so one of the things that we did in the last three weeks is we sent out a survey to all the parents for them to give feedback and then we'll be discussing that feedback at the meeting. Um, we'll be discuss discussing the school parent student compact which is basically an agreement that says what the school will do, what parents will do, and what students will do throughout the school year. Um, and then we'll also discuss our family engagement events. And those are events that happen outside of the school day um, to engage the entire family. Engagement events just simply for fun, of, like something for fun that everyone does together, or is it putting some lessons in there? Or, or I'm not looking for like a list of what you've done before, but I just don't have anything to base it on. Title I Nationwide helps over 25 million students by funding services to ensure an equal opportunity for success. From Hempfield Happenings, I'm Abby Gingrich. Here, we're always happy to take that and as we work to improve our Title I program also. Now that summer is starting up and the grass is growing to grow, yards must be mowed more and more. Dylan Risser went to investigate this common shore. With summer starting up and more beautiful sunny days like this comes the scourge of the homeowner, mowing season. But why do we mow our yards? According to Lancaster County law, no person owning or occupying any property within the city shall permit any grass, weeds, or any vegetation whatsoever, not edible or planted for some useful or ornamental purpose, to grow or remain upon such premises as to exceed a height of six inches, to throw off any unpleasant or noxious odor, to conceal any filthy deposit, or to create or produce pollen. Keith Greer is a Hempfield High School student who has taken advantage of the need to have a lawn mowed via his own lawn mowing business. What I like most about mowing is that I get to basically ride around in a huge lawnmower and I get paid to do it, so it's a lot of fun. I started off by handing out flyers and then my client base grew because I started mowing and then people saw me mowing and then it basically grew over time. On average, I mow probably 19 lawns weekly. Something really fun about lawn mowing is that I am in charge of my own hours and I'm in charge of myself, so when I mow, I'm in charge of everything I do, and if I make a mistake, I'm the one at fault. It's not like I have a boss. Erin Seats is a local homeowner who mows her own yard. Sometimes mowing the lawn can be time consuming and the last thing I want to do at the end of the day. Although once I'm finished, it always looks great and it's well worth the time I put in. It's a great space for my kids and dogs to play. For more information, please visit ecode360.com. From Hempfield Happenings, I'm Dylan Risser. That was our final news story for the spring 2021 semester of Hempfield Happenings. It was a challenging year with the pandemic, but we were proud we were able to follow the latest COVID guidelines and keep our show running these last 15 months. Another group that persevered in these challenging times was the senior class. In early June, the students held their commencement outdoors in the Georgialist Law Firm Stadium. 
We end this month's show with a look back at some of the highlights of this year's commencement. As always, thanks for watching. Stay tuned for next month as we show highlights from our Student Television Network National Competition and return in September to watch a tribute to the members of the senior class of ComTech. Until then, stay cool and enjoy the summer. Good evening, Hempfield! I am Jim Daig, the principal of Hempfield High School, and it's my pleasure to welcome you to this evening's commencement program for the class of 2021. Good evening, Hempfield. For those of you who don't know me, I'm Millie. And on this momentous occasion of our graduation, I, like the other speakers, was asked to speak on the ideas of resilience and reward. Now, this past year has been difficult and peculiar to say the least. We all went through some of the toughest times in our lives, yet we bounced back. That's resilience. I'm sure that the word resilience has a different meaning to every person here. For me, the word resilience immediately takes me back to a very specific time in my life when I moved to the US from India. As a shy and quiet 10-year-old, nothing seemed bolder than the idea of moving to a country across the world where I wouldn't know anyone or be able to speak the most common language. And let me tell you, it was difficult. It still is sometimes, but I made it through. In fact, I came back stronger. That 10-year-old Millie would have never fathomed the idea of getting on a stage in front of a few thousand people to speak. Yet here I am. I wouldn't necessarily call that resilience. It's growth. It's what happens when you push through an especially difficult time of your life. Moving to America has allowed me to become who I am today, someone who I'm proud to be. These past years at Hemfield have shown me what I'm capable of doing. Certainly, this is the product of having to adapt to a whole new life and realizing that opportunities like that seldom present themselves. It was daunting. I can't even begin to tell you all of the embarrassing and awkward experiences I went through in trying to figure out this new life of mine. But it showed me how to grow and how to become a better version of myself. That's what going through a difficult time does to a person. It will give you the strength to get to where you were before, but more than that, it will help you get beyond the point where you were originally. I would say most, if not all of us, have changed and grown in ways that would not have been possible if this past year had not been so challenging. But being here today means that we've successfully made it through an incredibly important chapter of our lives. However, as cheesy as it sounds, this is just the beginning. I hope that wherever life takes us next, we continue, we continue to accept whatever challenges it throws at us. I hope we all find success and fulfillment in what we do, even if it takes some time. Finally, I hope we all grow and become stronger. Congratulations, class of 2021, and best of luck out there. A person's senior year of high school is usually marked by the traditional events that signify the end of a major chapter in life. The first and last prom, the last homecoming football game, and walking across the stage at graduation. However, this 2020 to 21 school year was unlike any other. Some teachers made it to May without seeing some of their students in person. It was the year of sitting in a half full classroom, contact tracing, shortened sports seasons, and asynchronous virtual days where student productivity was at an all-time high. Through loss after loss after loss of the traditional senior year events that everyone looks forward to, we have gained something even greater, a premium Zoom meeting account. 
All jokes aside, as a student body, resilience was gained. Resilience is something that is not inherited, but it is learned. With the ability to cope with stress and adversity, this senior class has gained something that no other class has. Although you may think COVID-19 has robbed us of any resemblance of normalcy and has ruined our senior year, it has given the class of 2021 a new skill set. We got creative. We were forced to communicate with our peers and teachers in new ways, and we went out of our comfort zone by teaching ourselves to utilize gifts, talents, and resources we didn't even know we had. To adopt this new resiliency, we had to challenge ourselves to think differently, to leave the educational comfort zones we had established for the last 12 years. At the end of this school year, and to the class of 2021, I say challenge accepted, challenge fulfilled. Would our top 10 class ranked students please approach the stage and line up in alphabetical order? Our first student is Annie Akbar. Annie will attend Princeton University where she will major in political science. Melissa Caracciolo. Melissa will attend Lehigh University where she will major in civil engineering. Reagan Gillesey. Reagan will attend Messiah University where she will major in nursing. Lily Heilshorn. Lily will attend the Massachusetts Institute of Technology where she will study civil and environmental engineering. Cullen Meldrum. Cullen will attend Brigham Young University and has not declared a major. Dylan Otto. Dylan will attend the University of Utah and will major in computer science. Millie Romani. Millie will attend Johns Hopkins University and will major in biomedical engineering and pre-med. Bridget Reher. Bridget will attend Penn State University at University Park and will major in environmental systems engineering. Claudia Silvovsky. Claudia will attend Cornell University and she will major in biomedical engineering and pre-med. And Lily Warnock. Lily will attend the University of Pittsburgh where she will major in environmental science. Let's give these students a round of applause, please. Good evening, Hemfield. I've always wanted to say that. And welcome to the class of 2021 commencement ceremony. I'd just like to preface this by saying I've had to revise this speech a lot since the first time I wrote it in third grade. It started out as my valedictorian speech, but I knew once I started seventh grade algebra that it just wasn't going to happen. So after many revisions, four years of high school, and one pandemic, here I am. And here we are, all of us sitting together at an in-person graduation. So a huge thanks to Hemfield for making this happen, and a shout out to ourselves, because we've earned this. We've done so much work, and tonight affirms for us that it did not go unnoticed. This year's theme is resiliency and reward, a little bit of R&R. &R. I'm sure that everyone has been told how resilient they've been this year through COVID. And I agree, but out of our 12 year educational career, COVID has been a part of it for only a year and a half. Now that's still a year and a half too long, but what I want everyone to understand tonight is that COVID didn't make you resilient. You've always had it in you. There's a couple boxes to check off to be resilient. You withstand adversity, you cope and work through struggles, and you recover to continue to be your very best self. You aren't born resilient. It builds within each and every one of us. We often think that something big has to happen in order for us to learn resiliency. But in reality, resilience is something that we can, and we do, practice daily, whether you realize it or not. Here are a few examples of the little things you have been doing to build your resilience each day. When you got a bad grade on a test, you didn't give up on the class, you reevaluated and found a new study method. You wanted to audition for the musical or try out for a sport, and even though you were worried you might be cut, you put yourself out there and tried anyways. You felt overwhelmed and stressed, so you talked out how you felt to cope in a healthy way. You accidentally drove to Chick-fil-A on a Sunday, but you didn't let it ruin your lunch, you just went to Popeyes instead. You have been building up a reservoir of skills, courage, 
confidence, coping, and character that you will keep with you all of your life. You've been practicing being resilient since you first began to walk, and it has prepared you to now reap its rewards. We're graduating. Through all the tests that life has thrown at us, from Algebra 2 to COVID-19, you did it. But you aren't done yet. Now that you've been resilient and reaped what might be your greatest reward thus far, it is your job to continue to build your resilience and call on it when you need to. Life brings much bigger challenges than a bad grade on a chemistry test. And when they arise, we'll be ready. Trying times do not determine your life. It is your reaction to them that will. When life seems all wrong, bounce back and make it right. The toughest parts are yet to come, but so are life's greatest rewards. In trying times, just remember, you are prepared for whatever life has thrown at you, and you will be resilient, confident, courageous, and the best you that you can be, because you have your R&R. I'm honored to have grown with all of my amazing peers, and I wish you all the best as you continue to grow. Thank you. People have been throwing around the word resiliency a lot in the last year and a half. What comes to mind when you think of resiliency? People's response to major disasters? Intense stories that you see on the news? That's what I think of. I'm sure some of you have experienced these kinds of things. But like others of you, I've been very privileged to not have experienced anything like that. So how can we be resilient through what we're facing if it's the first time we're facing a global pandemic in our second half of high school? How can we bounce back from what we've experienced and even learn something from it? Well, luckily, we've all been practicing for the last 18 years. Do you remember learning how to walk? Me neither. But I've been told it consists of standing up and falling down over and over again until you finally take a few steps. You hop right back up after you fall and try again without shame because it's just what you do. That's resilience. Or how about when we moved from middle school to high school? We were thrown into a bigger building with thousands of people and classes that were 30 minutes longer, but after a few weeks, we knew our way around like we'd been here for years. Well, some of us. I still don't know how to get through the maze by the LGs. But by immediately adapting to a completely new situation, we practiced resilience once again. And now, Sitting here in our caps and gowns, we're showing the resilience we've been working on all this time. We've all missed out on something in the last year. Some really big things, some small. Sports seasons, dance theater, conventions, tournaments, classes, trips, homecoming. Even the SATs were canceled for some of us, which was a real tragedy. But we bounced back from it all because we're here today, still graduating. We are all capable of being resilient, every single one of us. And while this isn't the last time we'll have to persevere through something difficult, it's not the first time either. And because of that, we'll be prepared for whatever comes next. Our gift for practicing resilience our whole lives is the ability to be resilient. But it didn't take a pandemic to make us that way, and we don't need another one to use our ability to be resilient. So after hearing the word resilience too many times to count in the last year and the last two minutes, I hope you start to think of yourself when you hear that word. And the next time you're learning how to walk, or maybe facing a new struggle, remember all the things you've bounced back from, including the time you graduated from high school during a global pandemic, and trust that you'll be able to bounce back again. Mr. Bermersky, Mr. Donato, it is my pleasure and honor to present to you the graduating class of 2021. I hereby certify that these students have completed all academic requirements established by the Hempfield School District and the State Board of Education and are entitled to receive their diplomas. Adeline Grace Gers, Christian James LaBarbara, Damian Armado Forbes, Lauren Alyssa Schaefer, Larissa Ryan Schaefer. Gil Adrian Ramos Santa. Zachary Douglas Ray. Adam Michael Jimison. Once again, Hemfield, good evening. In case you forgot me from earlier, I'm Millie, and I was your class president for these past few years. 
For anyone wondering, why is she back? Don't worry, I'll keep this one brief. During our time at Hemfield, we've all had our individual experiences that have shaped us. These experiences come together to tell a beautiful story. The story of some remarkable individuals living through an unforgettable time. Whether your story involves meeting the people you want by your side for the rest of your life, or finding your true passion, or a really weird history class when you and some friends did something you'll always remember, you know who you are. It's time for us to go out in the world and write our own sequels. These sequels, too, will look different for everyone. That's the beauty of life. You can do something completely different from the person standing right next to you and still be completely fulfilled. But for now, let's all do that one thing that we've been waiting for all evening. At this moment, I'd like you all to join me in turning your tassels from the right to the left to signify the end of an amazing story. Congratulations, Hemfield Class of 2021. We did it. Congratulations to the class of 2021. This concludes tonight's ceremony. Thank you for attending. And please drive home safely. You could throw those hats.